everybody, let's stand up to our feet. Let's begin to worship God. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Welcome to Emmanuel, Emmanuel Christian Center. Emmanuel meaning that God is with us. How many believe that God is with us this morning? How many believe that God is going to help us, that God is going to work out every situation? I am in expectation of a miracle. I believe that God will do powerful things in our life. Sing it out. Say
with all of your heart, just lift up your hands. Just give him some praise. Let's give him some praise this morning. He's worthy of the praise. Open up your mouth and just let him know how much you love him. Let him know how much he means to you. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray there is a song in your heart. Lift your hands in the sanctuary and worship him. Good morning. Welcome to service. We welcome you. Put your hands together if you're here in person. If you're joining us on Zoom or live stream, we welcome you. We're going to start with Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. So, Father, we thank you today that we will receive the word of the Lord and that it will grow in our hearts and in our lives. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. Somebody put your hands together. What a great day it is to worship. What a great day it is to praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for all your help. Somebody just shout, help. Thank you for supernatural help. Beyond the natural, we need divine help in every area of our lives. Thank you for your word in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that working in our lives stir up the power of god in our lives stir it up in our homes stir it up in our families stir it up on our jobs thank you for all your help thank you that you are a good god we come to worship we come to magnify we come to praise you we come to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords you shall that you said thou shalt worship the lord thy god him only shall thou serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap as Elder William Harris come and pronounce the blessing over all of our children. Thank the Lord for all of our children. Thank you. Father, we just say thank you again, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for all of our children. We praise you, Lord, that it is a privilege and an honor to stand before you, O oh God, to hold up the lives of our children to you, Father. We claim them for you, Lord God. Oh, God, we take authority over the enemy that will come against our children. Oh, God, help our children walk in the authority of God. Let them be empowered by God to do the things that you have for them to do, Lord. We pray that favor will surround them as with the shield, oh God. Give our children favor, favor in the schools, oh God, favor in the community, favor at home, Lord God, favor amongst their friends and peers. Give them supernatural blessings, oh God. We pray that you will empower them to live for you, Lord, that they will walk in your ways, oh Father. And Lord, we thank you for each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Raise your hand and let's pronounce the blessing over our children. Stretch your elbow all the way up, everybody. Good kids are no accident. You got to pray over them every day. Somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. Everybody say with me. Say, Lord, we pronounce your blessing over our children, our children's children, generations to come. Say it with me. Say, Lord. We renounce every curse. We renounce all the bad things that can happen in our children. Thank you. They will know their identity. They will know their identity. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. At this time, we release our children. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness. And we release them to go into their children's church. God bless you and the youth as well.
on, everybody, stand up to your feet real quick. Let's get our blessing this morning. Let's get our favor this morning. Hey, hey, hey. somebody say bless.
first time, would you just raise your hand? You may be seated. If you're here for the very first time, would you wave your hand in the air? Our ushers have a packet for you. We would like to welcome you as a part visiting today, and we invite you back at any time. God bless you. Thank you for coming out. Don't forget to reach out to a lost and dying world. It is our job. We are God's hands in the earth realm. Just tell somebody your story. Tell them what it means to live for Jesus, and they're going to want to know more about it. If you go past that first sentence, people want to know. It's amazing what's going on in people's lives, and they need the love of Jesus Christ. Um, we want to signing up our praise dancers today in the foyer. If you have not already signed up, please go out and sign up. If you were kind of bobbing back and forth today, that means you're assigned to be a praise dancer. So go out there and sign up, and we're going to have a great time with that. Uh, don't forget, membership is priceless. You want to be a part of the body of Christ. We pray over you. There's a covering over you. We come together. We got prayer team. Our prayer teams have prayer teams. So you're going to get prayed for. So take a card, fill it out, and become a member of Emmanuel Christian Center. God bless you today. And doesn't the choir look good? You guys look good. You sound good. We're so excited. If you're back there singing and you're like, man, I should be up there, just get a hold of Minister Jordan and come. Look, they're welcoming you. They're excited to have some new people to join in. Show up on Wednesday, talk to Minister Jordan, and become a part. You don't have to be a perfect singer. You don't have to be a perfect singer. People are like, I'm not a soloist. That's okay. You want to join in. They're going to blend their voices together. So do something for the Lord. Find something to do for the Lord. You cannot sit on your talents and your gifts. If you're a greeter, if you're an usher, we can use more ushers in our usher, ushers ministry. See Elder Ronnie to become an usher, but do something. Work in children's. It's a blessing to work in children's. Work in youth. Let us know where you want to serve. Uh, also, Monday morning, the men's Bible study. Man, they have been, it has been powerful. They've been talking about conflict, and, you know, they always learn something. They don't just leave you hanging. There is a learning process to that. 5.30 a.m., you won't regret it. I'm amazed at how the men get up for that 5.30 Bible study. And then this Saturday, a little bit later, 8 a.m., for the late sleepers, 8 a.m., the Man Up session will be this Saturday. So you want to become a part of that. And then the women's will be doing October 15th is our next Bible study. So God bless you today. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin well, God is good. Somebody say amen. Amen. God loves you. And this more, uh, next uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be talking about God's plan for your life as a man. What is God's plan? God has a plan for all of us. And we have to get into it. We have to flow in it. And we have to work in it. And then you will be amazed at what he'll do in, in your life. If there's something in your life you want to put under the blood, just stand with me at this time. If there's something in your life you just want to put it under the blood. Under the blood. Whether that's a problem, a marriage situation, a child, a spouse, whatever it is, just put it under the blood. Somebody say, the blood. The blood still works. On an old rugged cross. On a hill called Calvary, there he died so that we would have a right to come and put things under the blood. Raise your hand with me this morning and let's just plead the blood over our lives. Father, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that came down from Calvary's cross. We thank you for the blood, the blood of Jesus. We put every situation under the blood, finances, problems, children, Thank you. We plead the blood. Somebody just shout the blood. Come on, shout it again. The blood. The blood of Jesus. Cover our lives. Cover our children. Cover our finances. Cover our health. Cover every area of our lives. The blood of Jesus. The blood. This is war. You can't have my children. You can't have my family. You can't have our church. The blood. Somebody help me say the blood. The blood of Jesus over every area of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a hand clap for the blood that covers our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. We're going to sing war in just a minute. But I want to thank John and Esther Clifford. Uh, yesterday did a wonderful seminar. Stand up, John. They're right over there. Stand up, John and Esther. Thank you. 
you did a wonderful uh, seminar on where to find the money. You got children, nieces, nephews going to college, then you have to know there's money that they can go for free. They don't have to get into the student loan program. They can go for free, but you got to talk with John and Esther. They did a great seminar yesterday, and you need to know where the money is. He sent his, his daughter to North Carolina the, uh, and for the University of North Carolina, and she graduated, and she did, left with no bills. Somebody say amen. See, the Lord will help you. Somebody say help. The Lord will help you, but you got to ask him for help. Somebody say amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap for the choir as they sing the Lord. Protection. I feel, I feel. 
finish out the blood. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. Stand up on your feet. Our guest speaker this morning is Dr. Raleigh Washington, former pastor of Rock Church in Chicago, Illinois, former CEO of Promise Keepers. Uh, he's authored several books, and he's working on one now. And, uh, and uh, he was my old boss at Promise Keepers, a good boss. It's a blessing to have a good boss. Somebody say amen. Amen. And uh, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot about integrity, about serving the Lord. And uh, he started a new ministry uh, called Awaken to the Truth, Awaken in the Voice of Truth. He's president and CEO of that. But the most important thing in my life is he's a theologian. And when I have Bible questions, that's who I call. He's a former uh, uh, professor at a seminary, and he knows the word of the Lord. But more than that, he's our friend. Would you put your hands together with me and welcome Dr. Raleigh Washington to Emmanuel Christian Center. God is a good God. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Father, I thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy, and for your goodness. And I thank you for Pastor and Carmel Simpkins, the shepherds that you have placed to this flock. I pray that you would now allow me to decrease in the humanness of who I am so that you might increase in the power of your spirit in and through me. I pray that somebody today will be touched, somebody today will be delivered, somebody today will be saved because of your powerful word. This I pray in the matchless and majestic name of Jesus. The men and women of God said, once again, the men and women God said, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I do believe that God has sent me today with a message. It's going to set somebody free. I believe today that there's somebody, probably plural, uh, who's dealing with issues. Pastor, prayed with you to put it under the blood. But you know, sometimes that doesn't work because people put things that, under the blood and then they snatch it back. They snatch it back because it's hard to let go of something when you've been hurt. I mean, hurt and deeply wounded. Today, God's going to set some people free. And he's going to move you beyond bitterness. Say this with me. He says, Lord... Move me today beyond bitterness. I want to start this by telling you a story. Uh, it's part of a song. Uh, I've been to the Caribbean almost a dozen times, different countries in the Caribbean. In every Caribbean country, I went in, whether it's Jamaica, or the Bahamas, or St. Thomas, St. Croix. St. John, I've been there. But every time I've gone there, there's a song that I always heard. It's, it's almost like a Caribbean national anthem. I don't know. But the name of this song is Shame and Scandal in the Family. Now, I can't sing. My wife can sing. My daughter can sing. And I can't sing. But I'm going to tell you the words to it because it's going to give us a platform for which we're going to Leap off it today. It says, there was a young boy. He met a pretty girl. He fell in love, and he asked her to marry him. She said yes, and he was really happy, so he wanted to get some advice from his dad. So he went to his dad and told his, girl, told his dad, I met a pretty girl. I fell in love and asked her to marry me. And his dad said, what's her name? When I, he said, when I told dad her name, dad said, no, son, no. That girl is your sister, but your mama don't know. But then the chorus goes this way. Woe is me. Shame and scandal in the family. Said so the young boy was sad. He saw his mommy had a 
cloth around his head. His mama said, why are you so sad? He said, I saw a pretty girl. I fell in love. I asked her to marry. She said, yes. But when I told dad, he asked me her name. When I told dad her name, he said, no, son, no. That girl is your sister, but your mama don't know. And his mother read back with a hearty laugh, said, son, don't worry. Go, son, go, because your daddy ain't your daddy, but your daddy don't know. And, uh, and, and then the chorus follows, woe is me, shame and scandal in the family. Now, it never fails whenever I tell that little story from that song. People do exactly what you did. They laugh. You know why? There's a huge kernel of truth that's embedded in that dynamic. We're going to move beyond bitterness. Let me define bitterness for you. Bitterness is tasteless, odorless, and it's poison. It's invisible, but it will steal your joy, your peace, your ministry. It'll even ruin your marriage. Watch this now. But bitterness is not what somebody else does to you. Bitterness is what you do to yourself because somebody else has done something to you. Watch out. I know this thing called bitterness. It won't, will not come to your door once. It'll come back again and again and again. Uh, I need to tell you, this is my, my story, how I faced bitterness. I graduated from Florida a &M University and took ROTC for four years. And uh, graduated, and I had a commission as a second lieutenant in the military. Went into the military, and I did really well because the officer corps is very competitive. It's like dog eat dog. Uh, you win in the military, you advance when you're the firstest with the bestest and mostest. So I, I did well in the military. I got promoted to first lieutenant captain, major, lieutenant colonel, and I was moving ahead of my contemporaries. Uh, I did well in the military. And I tell you, sir, I, I, I was selected as a major to go to the command and general staff college in Leavenworth, Kansas. Now, only the top 50% of majors are selected. So I was in the top 50% of all majors in the Army at that time. Uh, I then went on to uh, get promoted to lieutenant colonel. In my first year as a lieutenant colonel, in the first year of eligibility, I was selected for the Army War College. Only the top 5% of all lieutenant colonels in the Army are selected to go to the Army War College. And so I was in the top 5%. Now, how did I get there? Uh, I commanded a battalion in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the home of the Airborne. Two years, it became the number one battalion uh, on Fort, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I went on to command the San Juan District Recruiting Command, San Juan, Puerto Rico. There were 50 of them uh, throughout the 50 states. When I took command of the San Juan District Recruiting Command, it was ranked 28 out of 50. Nine months later, under my command, it became the number one district recruiting command in the Army. I was doing well. I was moving fast, moving up the ladder. I was headed toward a star. Uh, but people, there were people then that got envious and jealous of how fast I was moving up. One white full colonel said, if you don't stop Raleigh Washington, he'll be the first black general in the adjutant general's corps. I was headed that way. Then lies, false narratives began to be uh, 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 passed at me, accused, accused me of all kinds of things. They weren't true, but it was there over and over and over again. Finally, I ended up in what's called a show cause board. Three white generals in Fort McPherson, uh, Georgia, I was on a tribunal, and uh, their job was to find out if I could show cause as to why I should remain in the military. Uh, this went on for about two weeks. They found nothing. Uh, Hank Aaron, home run king, uh, got to be a friend of mine because of a, 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 a brother-in-law of his. He testified on my behalf uh, because they said I brought him to Puerto Rico and we did all things, all, no, nothing but lies. He diffused all of that. So they found nothing. At the end of two weeks, they came up with a conclusion. 
The conclusion was is that I was guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer. Now, in order to find an officer guilty of conduct unbecoming, there are four separate set of criteria. All four criteria must be present and validated. None of the four was present, none of them was validated, but yet they concluded that. So to make things happen, uh, they offered me retirement in lieu of being discharged. Now that phrase in lieu means I'm admitting that I'm guilty, I'm admitting that you got it, but I'm gonna get my retirement, my benefits, I'm out of here. Well, see, one year before that happened, that's when I really came to know Jesus. Uh, and I know that the truth <laughs> will set you free. I, to I told the truth when Uncle Sam set me free. Uh, I want you to know that uh, my wife said, honey, we're not guilty of those allegations. And I recommend don't take a tainted retirement. She set me free to do what was on my heart. I refused to take a tainted retirement. So what happened? Uh, after serving 19 years, 11 months, and 29 days, one day short of 20 years, I was discharged from the Army under other than honorable conditions. One day short of 20 years. Why? Because of lies, because of envy, probably some little racial insensitivity uh, as that, but I'm just saying that with all of that combined. The question is, how could I deal with this and not become bitter? My wife, Paulette, and I, we didn't become bitter. We became better. We say they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And so I got out of the military. I want to give you now, from the word of God, three antidotes for getting beyond bitterness. It happened in my life, and I think it's gonna happen in the life of a number of people here today present. Three antidotes. It's in the book of Philippians and chapter three. I, I read from the New American Standard, but no matter what version you follow, uh, it'll be good. Philippians chapter three, we're talking about three antidotes to get beyond bitterness. Antidote number one is beware of dogs. Let me say it again. Antidote number one is beware of dogs. Let me read this. Uh, Philippians chapter three, verse one, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it's a safeguard for you. Verse 2 in my Bible says, beware of dogs. I told you, it's in the Bible. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. Paul is saying, beware of dogs. Now, he's not talking about four-legged dogs with a tail. He's talking about two-legged people, but doggy ain't like attitude. Uh, uh, Paul says, beware of these dogs. Now, the word beware literally means don't burn yourself up with your own anger. So he says, beware of dogs. Notice, beware of evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. Uh, let me tell you, when I think of dogs, dogs can remind you of people, certain dogs. Uh, let me just try it now. I'm reminded of the alley dog. You know the alley dog when you see it because the alley dog has always got his nose in somebody else's garbage. Now, 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 Pastor Simpkins, not in this church, but in some church they have these alley dogs saying, child, let me tell you about him. He thinks he's something. She thinks he's something. You know, I got the scuzzy on it. Beware of these alley dogs. You can get caught up in their stuff and you, you get, make you bitter. Now, there's another dog called a caca spaniel. Uh -oh. See, you clip it up and powder it, what have you, and, and, and when the caca spaniel get all clipped up and walk, it's like, see me, because I know I'm looking good. 
Now, Pastor Simmons, not in this church, but in some churches they have these cocker spaniels. And they look good and dressed up, what have you. When time comes for work, you can't find them. Uh, uh, now, now uh, there, there's another dog that's called a bulldog. That's a mean and an ugly dog. If you look at a bulldog and he's kind of gnawed and you kick it by mistake, the bulldog will bite you every time. Yeah. Now, not in this church. <laughs> but in some churches, they have these bulldogs. And if you look at them wrong, they'll snap you every time. Beware. You don't want to get caught up with these ones. The issue is, let me get just one other dog. It's called a pit bull. They say this pit bull is, is a mean dog. If a pit bull grabs hold of something, he'll hold on to it and hold on to it and not let it go. Now, not in this church, Pastor. But on every committee, they have these pit bulls. You're trying to get something and they won't agree with you for nothing. They just hold on to what's negative. See, be aware of these people with these doggy-like attitudes. You can get caught up in it, and it will make you bitter. Yeah. Paul even talks about what he calls the false circumcision. Yeah. That's the people who are called Judaizers. Uh, Paul says salvation by grace through grace, by faith yeah. through grace. Yeah. The Judaizers say, no, you've got to be circumcised, and you've got to be proselytized, and you've got to first become a Jew before you, before you can get saved. Watch out for these false narratives. Today we're living with a lot of false narratives. Yeah. And the false narratives is causing all kinds of uh, uh, toxic division. Yeah. You want to be aware of that. Uh, you know, when I think of falseness and people getting caught up in false dynamics, it reminds me of a little old lady. I love little old ladies in the church. Mother Montgomery, she's about 80 years old. I thought she had the Bible memorized. And she's teaching everything. Just love Mother Montgomery, man. She, she was kind of wonderful. Well, this old lady was like that. Loved the Lord in the church. But she had an atheist neighbor. This neighbor didn't like her, almost hated her because she's always talking about this God that does not exist. See, the neighbor was an atheist, did not believe that God exists. But the little old lady was that way. One day the little old lady ran out of food. She was in a room with the windows up. And she was saying, Lord God, your servant has no food. Send food. And the an atheist neighbor was cutting hedges outside that window. He heard this little old lady praying for this God that didn't exist. Uh, he said, I'm going to prove to this little lady that there's no God. Dropped his hedge clippers, jumped in his pickup truck, went to the store, bought four bags of groceries, bought the groceries, put it on, put it on the front door, rang the buzzer, hid behind the hedges. The little lady who was praying to her God got up, opened the door, saw four bags of groceries. She says, God did it. He raised up behind the hedge and said, no, you think God did it. God didn't do it. I'm the only God. You know I did it. She said, no, 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 God did it. He said, no, no, I did it. She pushed him aside. She went to her town saying, God did it. He was behind her saying, I did it. He said, God did it. He said, I did it. Finally, he couldn't stand it. Grabbed a little lady, turned around and said, why do you keep saying God did it? I can prove I did it. I have a receipt. I know what's in every bag. I can prove it. Why do you keep saying God did it? She looked at him in the eye without blinking and said, not only did God do it, but he had the devil pay the bill. <laughs> you see, this lady, she understood who God was. Uh, uh, she was not buying the false narrative to say God wasn't there. Beware of dogs. You can get caught up in them and they'll make you bitter. Antidote number one. Antidote number two. Beware of putting the temporal in front of the eternal. Beware of putting that which is temporal in front of what is eternal. Here's Paul now, verse three. He makes it clear. He says, verse 3, For we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. See, flesh is that temporary stuff. Verse 4, he said, Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, 
Uh, if anyone has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Now watch Paul. He's talking about his qualifications. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, uh, of, uh, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, which is in the law, found blameless. Paul is saying to the Judaizers, anything you can do, I can do better. I have all the qualifications. I'm in the tribe of Benjamin. That's the favorite tribe. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. My mom and daddy was Hebrew. He said, I was a persecutor of the church, and about the law, I'm found blameless. But now let me tell you what I think about all of that that I have trumped you with. Verse 7, but whatever things, that's temporal, were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss. For the, he says, for, for the, I will count them as loss for the sake of Christ. Verse 8, more than that. I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. Now, I'm not preaching from the King James. That's the New American Standard. But I love King James in this verse. King James doesn't call it rubbish. King James calls it dung. That sounds like a proper description for stuff that's temporal that you put your confidence in. Notice that. Now, let's look at the eternal, verse 9. It's not the temporal, but the eternal. He said, and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on, based on the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. That's the definition of a true believer in Christ. That's the definition of, of true righteousness. This is really the eternal, to know Jesus Christ. To know him in the power of his resurrection. To know him in the fellowship of his suffering because you conform to his death. Uh, that is what is eternal. Beware, you don't want to get caught up really placing your emphasis in temporal things. Money, clothes, cars. Uh, you know what's going to happen to a car if you keep it long enough? It's going to rust out. <laughs> uh, uh, your money, uh, you can't take it with you. <laughs> uh, uh, this, let me tell you what happened to me. This is just a few weeks ago. I was with my wife and, and my assistant uh, in Starbucks, and she, she was doing some things for my computer to get things lined up. My wife said, but she, it gets cold in there sometimes. She had on sleeveless blouse. So uh, my wife says, hey, Renee, you're cold. She says, uh, uh, I says honey, don't you have a car? And said, my suit car is, uh, I got my suit coats in the car. So my wife went out, got my suit coat, brought it back in, and she put it around her. We didn't know that at that time, but my checkbook, which was in my coat, had fallen out when she brought the coat. And it was out there. I didn't know it. Now, how did I know? A young man walked in, ordered. He says, hey, somebody in here lost a checkbook. Man, it lost a checkbook. I said, honey, check my coat. Man, the checkbook was not there. He said, uh, there's a lady out there in the car. She has it. So I got up and ran out there. She was in the car. The window was up. Uh, I knocked on the door. And she said, Yes. I said, I think you have something that uh, belongs to me. She said, who are you? I said, I'm Raleigh Washington. She said, oh, okay, you're the right one. I said, here's your checkbook. I said, ma'am, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. I appreciate it to no end. I had three brand new crisp $2 bills in my, in my pocket. I, I pulled them out, and I said, I want you to have these three crisp $2 bills. Some people think they're lucky or whatever, but I just want you to pay. She says, no, 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 that's okay. I said, ma'am, I insist that you take these crisp $2 bills. She said, I don't want your $2 bills. Take your $2 bills. No, I, have, I don't want it. She says, you're trying to get me to miss my blessing. Uh, $2 bills, I don't want that. I want a blessing from Jesus Christ. I'm an evangelist. I win souls. I look for my blessing from God. I don't need your $2 bills. I took my $2 bills, and I put them back in my pocket, and I said, thank you, ma'am. I walked away. That lady had it right. See, 
$2 bills, three, three crisps, $2 bills. Almost anybody else I offered them to them, they'd be glad to get them. She didn't want them as a reward for doing what was right in the sight of God. See, she turned down an earthly reward in order to get a heavenly reward. I don't want what comes from earth. I want what comes from heaven. Beware of putting that which is temporal in front of that which is eternal. Let me give you the third antidote. Antidote number one is beware of who? Beware of who? Beware of dogs. Second antidote, beware of placing the temporal before the eternal. We'll take it home with this. Antidote number three. Beware of allowing wounds of your past to interfere with your present and your future. Let me say it again so you can get it. Antidote number three, beware. Remember, beware is don't burn yourself up with your own anger. Beware of uh, getting so wrapped up and entangled with wounds of the past in such a way that they interfere with your present or your future. How you do it? We're still in Philippians. I'm going to go down to Philippians verse 13, uh, and we'll see that. It says, brethren, and I add sisterin. I want to leave nobody out. Brethren and sisters, I do not regard myself as, as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward for what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm not going to take that mess into my future. It's not going to mess up my present or my future. Uh, you know, hey, he did me wrong. She did me wrong. Oh, uh, man, she took my inheritance and, and all of it. Man, I'm just like, I, man, I can't, I just can't get rid of it, man. It's wrong. I'm dragging it. I'm going forward. No, no. Listen, you got to kind of let it go. Forget what lies behind. You know what the Bible says? Anybody that puts their hands to the plow and look back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. Uh, you got to forget what lies behind. Now, the question is, how, how, do you, how do you forget woundedness? How do you forget when somebody lied on you? How do you forget when somebody cheating you and done you wrong? Is it, has anyone in here did they ever been wounded or hurt by somebody? I mean, in your life, have you ever been wounded or hurt? Do you know what hurt people do? Say it again. What do hurt people do? Hurt people hurt people. See, when people get hurt, you know what they want to do? They want to curse it. Man, I mean, I was so wrong to did to me. They want to curse it. You know what they find out? Cursing it won't change it. After they curse it a while and it won't change it, you know what they begin to do? They begin to nurse it. I'm, I'm hold, I just can't let it go. I'm thinking about it. It interferes with my thoughts. I, don't wanna, I just can't let it go. I'm cursing it and nursing it, and still, it's still there. After I curse it and nurse it and it doesn't go, you know what I begin to do? I begin to rehearse it. I begin to rehearse it with anybody who will listen to me. Anybody, oh, man, it, it, it's, it makes it better if somebody else agree with me that yeah. this guy did me wrong. Yeah. No, that ain't making it better. That's just making it worse. You can't, man, curse it won't help it, and nursing it won't help it, and, and, and rehearsing it won't. You know what you have to learn how to do? You got to figure out how to reverse it. You got to figure out how to reverse it. And now, how do you reverse it? Let me give you part two of my military story. And this is how uh, I reversed it. This is how I didn't let what happened to me, getting kicked out of the military, wrongly uh, interfere with my present and my future. I was a new believer. 
I felt like God wanted me to preach. Went to the seminary, uh, got a master's divinity degree, and planted a church on the west side of Chicago. Man, I wanted to church. I wanted to preach. I wanted to win souls. Man, listen, line up five cockroaches there on the front row. I'll preach to one of them get saved. Man, I mean, I, I just, I just wanted to preach. Man, uh, man. So what was I doing? Winning souls, winning souls. We're winning souls, man. Racial reconciliation was one of my emphasis, man. I did that. I was putting people together, blacks and whites, man, to, to the praise and glory of God. Man, I was focusing on that dynamic. Got into a car accident, had a compound fracture, and then I had to do a, uh, do a deposition. So I didn't know any lawyers uh, in Chicago. I uh, flipped over the pages and found a lawyer by the name of Jeff Strange. He was Jewish. I didn't know it then. So I was with Jeff Strange. I was telling Jeff Strange, uh, a, a deposition about what happened to my wrist and why. And all of a sudden it hit me. This guy's a Jewish lawyer. I need to tell him about a Jewish carpenter that I know. So I then ended up telling him my whole story, my military story. And Jeff Strange said, Ronnie, that's not fair. I said, it's no, it's not fair. He said, we've got to do something. I said, what are you going to do, fight the army? He said, I know nothing about military laws, but we've got to do something. I said, Jeff, I have no money. He said, I didn't ask you for any money. Jeff took my case on a pro bono basis, meaning he didn't charge me a thing. And he methodically found out how to challenge the army. He did it for nine years. Every one, one or two months, man, he would call me and say, come sign this paper, come sign that paper. Never charge me a dime. All of a sudden, at the end of nine years, Jeff Strange calls the army to say, uncle. They reversed themselves, called me back to active duty to serve one day so that I might retire. Uh, man, listen, I, I remember that day real well. I said, I get to wear the uniform one more time. Man, and I had to fast two weeks before I could get into that bad boy. Man, so I, I've got my uniform, and we were going to the base, man, because uh, they're going to have a retirement parade all just for me. So I'm getting ready to go. Pa K. Ryan, who is uh, uh, the, the father of my partner in ministry, Glenn K. Ryan, he called me and said, Pastor, how are you going to the base? I said, I'm going to drive. He said, no, no, I'm going to drive you. He worked part-time in a funeral home in Wheaton, Illinois. He came to pick me up in a limousine. Uh, hey, I want you to know, I got into the limousine. I'm sitting in, in the back seat of the limousine. He's driving. Man, I got my uniform on, the silver leaf, the lieutenant colonel's on the shoulder, uh, braids on the hat is there. We got near the uh, gate to the base, and I saw the military policeman do this and salute an officer in the car in front of me. I said, Park here, Ryan, they got to do that to me. When that happened, man, and this guy at the gate, when he sees me and all this I got, and he comes to attention, don't drive off. I want you to hold it right there. It's been nine years. God will give me 30 seconds of calm or joy. Man, so he came to attention like that. Man, I was sat in the back seat. I just gave him a once over. He couldn't change until I returned the salute. So I just waited 30 seconds. I enjoyed every second of it. You know, I returned the salute, and it drove off. When he drove off, I said, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> uh, and we had three, two busloads of guys, from, of people from the church, a seminary professor was there. We had a retirement parade. Man, a parade man, it went unbelievably well. It was uh, just like you would not believe. But Jeff Strange then hooked up with another lawyer, Michael Gaffney. And so... They worked for another two or three months. They made my retirement pay retroactive for the entire nine years. Yeah. That, 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 that's not all. Uh, all those lies and all those false narratives, they expunged my records. And, and in Washington, D.C., my record in Washington right now is an immaculate record without a spot or blemish. Who else could do that but a holy God who responds to people who will obey, obey him? Hey, to God. Uh, glory. glory to God. Uh, yeah. He's able. This is what I want to tell you. Uh, take a seat, please. Because at this point, I want to flip it. The 
question is this. What would have happened if I had become bitter? I wouldn't be a retired lieutenant colonel now. I wouldn't be enjoying retirement pay. I'd have a messed up records in Washington, D.C. But because I didn't become bitter, I became better. Uh, I didn't become bitter. I said they meant it for evil nine years prior, but God meant it for good. Let me tell you how he meant it for good. I was headed really to be a general officer. That would have been great. I mean, I was headed to be a general officer. But if I had been a general officer, I'd have never gotten out of the Army. And if I'd never gotten out of the Army, I'd have never went to seminary. I'd have never planted a church. I'd never been a preacher. I wouldn't be preaching to you today if that didn't happen. You see, God knew that I loved the military, and he used that mess to snatch me out of the military because he wanted me to be in his Army. See, I'd rather be a private in the army of the Lord than a general in the army of man. And I did not allow myself to get tangled up with it. Beware of dogs. Beware of putting the temporal in front of the eternal. Beware of allowing yourself to get wrapped up and tied up and tangled because of wrong that has been done to you that has not been done right. Let me ask this question now. Who's dealing with unresolved bitterness right now? I want you to be honest. If God touches you, I want you to be bold enough to stand. Maybe there's a wife here who's been abandoned by a husband and it never got resolved. It's woundedness. Maybe somebody here today was abandoned as a child. Father was not there and you're still harboring a father's wound. Maybe there's somebody here today who was cheated out of an inheritance because when somebody died, another family member got something that belonged to you. Hasn't been resolved. Maybe somebody here today has been abused as a child by a close relative or a close friend. That's who does the abusing. And that abuse kind of messed up the issue in the future. I found out in Promise Keepers, Pastor Alvin, that nearly as many men are sexually abused as women. And because we are men, we won't ever admit it. And that woundedness will interfere with our relations in the future. Uh, somebody here may have been adopted. And the answer to the question of why has never, ever been answered. Maybe somebody's here who's faced church hurt because people get wounded even in the church where you don't expect it and it hasn't been resolved. Maybe there's somebody here today who got passed over for a promotion that you deserve and the boss gave it to his son, his uncle, his friend and didn't give it to you. Maybe there's somebody here who got fired wrongly from a job because of lies that never got re reconciled. God does not want you to carry that pain. Uh, thank you for those who are standing. But I want that person who's sitting there who's saying, uh, I'm all right. I, I don't want people to know I'm carrying it. That's the voice of Satan. Yeah. Satan wants you to, to be entrapped yeah. with that. Huh? 
How many of you have been hurt and you say, Lord, why, where were you, God? Uh, why, why did you, did you let that happen to me? I'm going to pray with you, but I want you to hear this. Uh, in Chicago, I had a garage door that, that, that was aluminum, didn't have a motor in sections. You pull it up and pull it down. One day I parked the car, got out, and I pulled the garage door, and my finger got caught right between the aluminum. And it, 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 I screamed. It was painful. When I did that, my wife came and said, what's the matter? And Rachel came to the door. I said, I caught my finger in the garage door. And they said, oh. So my wife said, Rachel, go get some ice, and uh, I'm going to call Dr. Stannard, who, who is a dick in my church. He lives across the street. And, and uh and, and so I was there just like that. And so Rachel was running around trying to get some ice. And Paulette was calling doctor. And my five-year-old baby girl at that time, Petra, was sitting at the top of the step. And she was crying, just crying, sobbing, uncontrollably sobbing. And so Rachel was looking for ice. And Rachel stopped and said, Petra, what in the world is wrong with you? She said, Dad's got his fingers hurt. Mama's trying to get Dr. Stan. I'm trying to get some ice. And you sitting up there, and you're just crying and crying and crying. What's wrong with you? Petra says, I'm crying because I feel Daddy's pain. I tell you that story because Jesus feels your pain. Jesus feels your pain. He died on the cross for all of your sins. He, he was an innocent lamb of God, and he paid the price. He was wounded for our transgressions. Well, he feels your pain, and he does not want you to take it any further. I want to pray with you, but let me give you quickly this, this, this formula. I use it. What do you need to do to get past it? Step number one, step number one, as you go now, think about that person or whoever it is. You got to go to that person and try to get it resolved. Even if it's a divorce, a husband, you got to try to go to him. Here's what scripture says. If your brother offends you, go to him. If he listens to you, you've won a brother. But if he doesn't, take two or three matured people with you. If he still doesn't listen, give it to the church. But in other words, you've got to do what you can to get it resolved. So that's the first thing. Second thing you've got to do, listen to me good, you've got to forgive the offender regardless. I want you to say something. Say this with me. Just say it with me. Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let me say it again. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Here is what Jesus says. Listen to this. This is his word. He says, if you forgive those who trespass against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Watch it. But if you do not forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive you for your sins. Forgive regardless. Thirdly, you got to choose to love that sinner. Choose to love and say, Lord, by, by the power of your spirit, help me to love that person who's done me wrong. One other thing. Go to him, try to resolve, give it your best. Whether you succeed or not, you go. Secondly, forgive him regardless. Thirdly, you, you got to choose to love him. Here's the final thing. I know Pastor Simpson will love this one. 
You got to pray for that sinner. You got to pray for that person who did you wrong. Listen now. Now, when you pray for the person who did you wrong, who messed you up, the first time you pray for him, you ain't going to mean it. <laughs> You're going to pray, you ain't going to mean it. Now, come on, you're going to be calling and worse. I'm going to do it because the pastor told me to do it. But, man, I, I want to stomp. I don't want to pray for him. But you got to pray for him. You know why? Keep praying for him. Every day, keep praying. The Bible says when you pray for a person who's done wrong and you mean the prayers before God, God says it's like putting hot coals on his chest. So God wants you to do that. The formula, go to the offender. Forgive the offender. Choose to love the offender and pray for the offender. And God will make a difference. Heavenly Father, I pray for each of these, my brothers and sisters who are standing. I'm praying right now, Lord, as they stood up, they stood up because you brought something to mind uh, that, 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 that they feel like cursing it and nursing it and rehearsing it. But what they want to do is reverse it. So right now, Father, I pray, remove the woundedness Right now at the foot of the cross, touch their hearts, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that you feel their pain. And you have now taken away all of your sins. And as you forgive that sinner, pray that that sinner might get forgiveness themselves. Lord, release them right now. Release them from all pain. Lord, as your word said, as we pray the Lord's prayer and say, Father, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. And Lord, today, let it not return, not return, not return. I want you to say to me right now, say, say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive your healing. And today, I am healed. I remove all woundedness away from me. And it shall never turn again never turn again never turn again i pray this in the mighty name of jesus let the saints say amen amen and amen amen come on and put your hands together i'm free somebody say i am free will you put your hands together for dr raleigh washington Oh, God is a good God. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God that delivered the word of God to us. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word shall stand forever. Raise your hand with me all over the house and say with me, say, Lord, I receive your word. I am set free. Come on, let's declare it by faith. I am set free. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you receive it, just put your hands together one more time. Thank you. We are free from bitterness. We are free from unforgiveness. We are free from the hurts. We are free from the pain. We are set free. Somebody say, I am set free. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God is a good God. Thank you, Dr. Raleigh Washington, for the word of the Lord. We so love you, and we appreciate you, and we thank God for your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. Will you just give the Lord one more hand clap for the man of faith that brought us the word of God today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible said there will be a famine in the land in the days ahead, not for bread, not for food, not for water, but there will be a famine in the land for hearing the word of the Lord. Today, we pray that you feast on the word of the Lord. It makes all the difference. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of God will what? Stand forever. Somebody say amen. And the truth shall set you free. I love the story of the mom that said, go ahead and date the girl. That is your daddy anyway. <laughs> Will you give the Lord a hand clap for Dr. Raleigh Washington? Oh. Somebody say, oh, Lord. 
Lord have mercy. I know he was happy. Luke 638. Take your Bible. Go with me to Luke chapter 638. Thank the Lord. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being online. We pray that God bless you. Pray that you receive the word of the Lord. God loves you. And just know that if you can't get back in church because of uh, illness or whatever, then just know that we'll be online for you. But if you can, if you can come by the house of the Lord, sit in the back and just tell God, thank you. How many of you know the Lord has been good to you? How many of you know you got a thank in your heart? How many of you know you owe God a thanksgiving? Somebody ought to say, thank you. Oh, come on, say it with authority. Thank you. The Bible says, my ears will be attentive. And my eyes will be open to the prayers that are made in the house of the Lord. There are some places where God keeps his eyes, and that's in the house of the Lord. So I want to encourage you, you always welcome back to the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. What? Shaken together. And what? running over for things that will happen in your life for benefits good measure pressed down shaken together and what running over somebody say i'm in the overflow oh say it again i'm living in the overflow is there anybody here that's living in the overflow is there anybody here that know the lord's been good to you is there anybody here that know that the lord blessed you is there anybody here that know the lord's been good to you is there anybody here that know the lord paid your bills we are blessed when i think of the goodness of the lord and all that he's done in my life i get emotional see you can be emotional without being spiritual but you can't be spiritual without involving your emotion. Something inside of you moves your heart. Somebody say amen. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. So I want to encourage you. Thank the Lord for all of his goodness. And then God says that he will increase you. You and your children. The Lord will bless you. And when the devil takes something away from you, if you are patient, and if you remain faithful, and if you don't get bitter, the Lord will give it back to you. The same way he gave it back to Dr. Raleigh. He'll give it back to you. He'll give it back to you. He gave him all his blessings back. Somebody say amen. Now he get his check every month. Is it every month? Every month. The Lord will give it back. Somebody say the Lord will give it back. The Lord will give it back to you. Don't play church. Get in and stay in and watch God bless your life. Let's just come forward this morning. Give everybody an envelope. Give everybody an envelope. And in this season, everybody need to give something. Why? Because we're in a time where we need God's help. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know about Russia calling up all of his troops. We don't know what's going to happen with, you know, inflation, with the interest rate. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen with the job market. People are just resigning. But we know one thing. If we stay with the Lord, if you are faithful, God will bless your life. If you are faithful, God will make it up to you. If you are faithful, God will give it back to you. The thief, Jesus said, comes to what? Steal and to what? Kill and to what? Destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have what? Life and have it what? more abundantly that's how we're going to make it with God's help that's how we're going to make it that's how our church made it with God's help nobody gave us big hundred thousand dollars nobody gave us it was the, the faithful tithers the faithful people that gave their best to God that gave the widow's might and God will increase you he says I'll increase you more and more you and your what? Children. So if, you was, if you're making out a check, make it payable to ECC, Emmanuel Christian Center. You'll get record of your giving, but not only that, God will bring favor into your life, and God will give it back to you. Somebody say amen. Can't tell you how, but I can tell you he'll do it. Somebody say amen. It might be in your health. It might be on your job. 
It might be in your children's life. But we serve a good God. And he'll make it up to you. Somebody say amen. God will take care of you. And he'll bless your life. I'm here as your pastor to tell you that God will take care of you. I'm that guy, Dr. Rollins, that never had a dad. I'm that guy that when I sat in your office and you talked to me about fatherhood and about raising my boys, when you poured into me, I was that guy. If he walked in the door, wouldn't know him. My mom on her deathbed wouldn't tell me. So I can relate to the guy in the story that he ain't your dad. <laughs> but I can tell you God has been faithful to me. The Lord's been good to me. Somebody shout, help! That's why we always say yeah, help. God's got to give you help in every area of your life. Somebody say help. And you got to trust in the Lord and he'll bless your life. When you close your hands to God, he closed his big old hand to you. Job said the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. And God blessed Job twi with twice as much. He gave him double for his trouble. Somebody say, I'm blessed. If you're giving today, stand with me. Stand with me and let's give to the Lord. I know I can't make it without God's help. I can't make it without his help. The Lord is our help. Hold your gifts up to the Lord and everybody say with me. Say, Lord, Lord I give into your kingdom. I give into your kingdom. I'm, going I'm going forward in every area, in every area of, my life. of my life. Say it again. Say, Lord, Lord I give into your kingdom. Thank you. I am free from bitterness. I am free from hurt. I am free from pain. I am. Thank you. I am adopted into the family of God. Thank you for Romans 8, 15. I am adopted to the family of God. So I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life in Jesus name I pray somebody say amen amen if you're giving come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith hey here we go if the Lord has been good to you say yes now Yeah. 
Thank the Lord for his goodness. We come to worship today and we pray that God bless you, that you will have a happy heart. Somebody say a happy heart. That you'll not leave bitter. That you'll not leave mad at anybody. Look at your name and smile. Show them all 32 and say that you are, I'm glad you're here. Show them all your teeth. Smile at somebody and say, I'm just glad that you're here. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. Worship the Lord all week long. Pray. Ask the Lord for help, and he'll bless your life. God loves his people, and he'll take care of you. Somebody say amen. Be here on Wednesday night. Got a great word for you. Looking forward to preaching on Wednesday night. God's going to bless you, and I want to encourage you. Men, on tomorrow morning, be online. We're going to talk about God's plan for mankind. God has a plan for you. You're not an accident. You're not a mishap. God has a plan for your life. Somebody say amen. And so I'm just so glad that, you, that, that you're here. Look at you. Put your hands on your neighbor's shoulder and just tell him it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Would you welcome Minister Darren Nidio as he pronounced a blessing over our lives? Would you welcome Minister Darren Nidio as he, as he pronounced a blessing over our lives today? Glad you're here. God bless you. Have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron. And unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Heavenly Father, awesome ruler, mighty God. Father, we thank you today, Father, for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God, giving us limbs that move, God, the warm blood that runs through our veins, God. Father, eyes to see and ears that hear. Father, we thank you that you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, that you begin to remove all bitterness, Lord God, from us. Father, that we may be able to receive from you, Lord God. That we may be able to be healed from you, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we go forth this week, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would help us and keep us. Give us the strength we need, God, to move forward this week in the name of Jesus. Give us traveling mercies, God, as we leave this place. In Jesus' miraculous and mighty name, I pray amen and amen. amen. Everybody lift your hands and say, Lord, Lord. help the Broncos. Yes, yeah. thank you.
Zone. Thank you for tuning in to the Emmanuel Christian Center live stream. Please tune in this week. Don't grow bitter, get better in Jesus' name. God bless you.